Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the State Road 40 Widening Projects Public Meeting. My name is Kathleen Enot, and I am the Project Manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. During the meeting, we will tell you about the Department's plans to improve safety and enhance operations along this corridor. We encourage your feedback, and during the presentation, we will provide multiple ways you can submit your questions and comments to us about this project. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing and will become part of the public meeting record. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed improvements. This meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, DeLand, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077, or by email at melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kulakowski at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. During this meeting, we'll cover three separate projects on State Road 40 near Silver Springs in Marion County. Project number 410674-2 runs from the end of the four-lane section just east of Northeast 58th Avenue to east of County Road 314. Project number 410674-3 runs from east of County Road 314 to east of County Road 314A. Finally, Project 410674-4 extends from east of County Road 314A to Levi Hammock Road or Southeast 183rd Avenue Road. The purpose of the projects is to enhance safety and mobility by alleviating congestion and increasing capacity along State Road 40 to accommodate expected future traffic volumes. During design, the project teams are working to maintain consistency through the corridor, evaluate additional safety options, implement effective stormwater management, and protect the environment and wildlife. A Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study to evaluate the feasibility and impacts of the improvements was completed in 2013 and approved by the Federal Highway Administration. In addition to advisory group meetings, public engagement activities included a kickoff public meeting, two alternative public meetings, and a public hearing. FDOT encourages public engagement at all stages of development. A public information meeting was held in April 2014, shortly after design began on the projects. A public hearing was also held on the proposed design of the first segments in November 2016. The first two segments are in the plans update stage, while the easternmost segment, 410674-4, is just beginning design. As mentioned, our first project is on State Road 40 from the end of the four-lane section or just east of Northeast 58th Avenue to east of County Road 314, a distance of about 5.3 miles. 
This is project number 410-674-2. In this segment, State Road 40 is a two-lane roadway with posted speed limits of 45 and 55 miles per hour. The improvements on this project are represented by two typical sections. Typical section one includes a 12-foot wide multi-use trail on the north side of the road. There are two 12-foot wide travel lanes in each direction with a 22-foot wide grassed median. Typical section one also includes a 25-foot wide bioabsorption activated media or BAM drainage treatment system on the south side of the road. Wildlife fencing would also be included on the south side of the road. Typical section two also includes a 12-foot wide multi-use trail on the north side of the road. There would be two 12-foot wide travel lanes in each direction separated by a 40-foot wide grass median. There would also be 10-foot wide outside shoulders. Typical section two has a 20-foot wide BAM on the north side of the road and a 15-foot wide BAM on the south side of the road. Wildlife fencing would also be included on the south side of the road. The existing Oklawaha River Bridge was constructed to handle boats and barges for the Cross Florida Barge Canal, which required vertical clearances of 70 feet. The Cross Florida Barge Canal project is no longer being considered. The new minimum vertical clearance is 25 feet as required by the U.S. Coast Guard. The existing span will be maintained by the new bridge. This project will impact about 35 acres of wetlands. Mitigation is provided by the FDOT mitigation program administered by the St. John's River Water Management District. An environmental resource permit was issued on May 9, 2018, and modifications are anticipated. A Clean Water Act Section 404 dredge and fill permit is required from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for the Oklawaha River. State and federal 404 permits are also anticipated. Design of this project is expected to finish in summer 2026. Right-of-way acquisition has been completed at a cost of $8.8 .8 million, and no additional right-of-way is needed. Construction is currently not funded. The estimated construction cost is $101.3 million. Our next project extends about 5.6 miles from east of County Road 314 to east of County Road 314A. This is project number 410-674-3. This segment of State Road 40 is a two-lane undivided roadway with center left turn lanes in some areas. From east of County Road 314 to west of County Road 314A, this project would provide two 12-foot wide travel lanes in each direction with inside and outside paved shoulders and separated by a 32-foot wide grassed median. The project would add a 12-foot wide shared use path along the eastbound side of State Road 40, as well as wildlife fencing and crossings along the corridor. From west of County Road 314A to east of County Road 314A, the project proposes four travel lanes. However, the inside lanes will be 11 feet wide and the outside lanes would be 12 feet wide. The grass median would be 22 feet wide. This will accommodate a seven foot wide on-street buffered bike lane along the westbound side of State Road 40. On the eastbound side, a 10 foot wide shared use path is planned. This section of State Road 40 is a black bear habitat and is home to other protected species. Every effort has been made to minimize environmental impacts on the project. The project will have about 7.56 acres of direct wetland impact, along with 22.2 .2 acres of secondary wetland impact. Additionally, the project will affect less than one-fifth of an acre of suitable sand skink soils. Mitigation for these impacts will be provided. Design of this segment is expected to finish in summer 2024. Right-of-way is funded and expected to start in summer 2023. Construction is not yet funded. The estimated construction cost is $65.1 million. The third project is 410-674-4. This 2.2 mile segment begins just east of County Road 314A and ends at Levi Hammock Road, also known as Southeast 183rd Avenue Road. In this segment, State Road 40 is a two-lane roadway that provides access to several residential properties as well as restaurants and public facilities along the corridor. 
There are no pedestrian facilities in this section. There are two proposed typical sections for this project. The urban typical section would tie into the adjacent widening project to the west, FPID 410674-3. This typical section would begin east of County Road 314A and end at Southeast 164th Avenue. The proposed design would provide two 11 to 12 foot wide travel lanes in each direction and a 22 foot wide grassed median with curb and gutter. A six foot wide sidewalk is proposed along the north side of the road and a 10 foot wide sidewalk is proposed on the south side of the road. The right of way for this typical section varies with a minimum width of 132 feet. The second typical section would begin just east of Southeast 164th Avenue and extend to Levi Hammock Road. The proposed design would provide two 11 to 12 foot wide travel lanes in each direction, as well as a 32 foot wide grass median, eight foot wide inside shoulders, and 10 foot wide outside shoulders. A six foot wide sidewalk is proposed along the north side of the road, and a 12 foot wide shared use path is proposed along the south side. There would be a 29 foot buffer between the roadway and pedestrian facilities. The right of way for this typical section is 192 feet. The proposed improvements are anticipated to have 0.85 acres of direct wetland impacts, 0.54 acres of secondary wetland impacts, and no impacts to surface waters. Mitigation will be provided to offset the wetland impacts. There are no anticipated impacts to protected species along the corridor. The project team has held ongoing coordination with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. Noise walls will be evaluated later in design. The initial design for this project is expected to finish in spring 2024. Right-of-way and construction are not yet funded. The estimated construction cost is $12.6 million. As mentioned, wildlife crossings are included in these projects. For the first two segments, 27 crossings are planned in the form of bridges, box culverts, and large elliptical pipes. These crossings give wildlife a safe way to cross the road by using paths under the road. The structures have been located and designed following the existing FDOT wildlife crossing guidelines. Consideration has been given to the interior and exterior design. Hard edges will be softened with the addition of rock along the walls and piles to break up the vertical outline of the structure. Cover for small species will be placed inside the crossings to allow for concealment. Fencing will be installed to reduce wildlife access to the roadway and direct them into the crossing structures. Jump outs will be installed within the roadway to allow wildlife trapped on the roadway to escape. Plantings will match the existing habitat type and will be included within the approaches to the entrance of the structures. The proposed median in all three sections will enhance safety by separating opposing lanes of travel. The decision of where to provide openings within the median is based on access management principles, which guide the location and type of median openings. The goal of access management is to enhance safety by reducing the number of ways vehicles could cross paths and potentially collide. Without access management, there are more conflict points or places where two vehicles could collide. The red dots on these diagrams show the conflict points that can result in angle, left turn, and U-turn crashes, which can result in the most serious injury. There are 11 conflict points at an open intersection or without a median. With a directional median, that number is cut almost in half. The projects will incorporate a variety of stormwater management techniques. In the westernmost segment, an innovative stormwater treatment system called Bioabsorption Activated Media, or BAM, is being used in collaboration with the St. Johns River Water Management District. BAM was developed at the University of Central Florida Stormwater Academy and is very effective at treating stormwater runoff. Other improvements for stormwater management are being considered throughout the project corridor, including roadside swales to collect runoff, stormwater inlets where there is curb and gutter, and new ponds throughout the corridor. We encourage your input and feedback about the project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. 
While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by March 6, 12 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. Those attending in person are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to the project staff. Written comments may also be submitted on the project websites at www.cflroads.com. Just enter the project number 410-674-2, 410-674-2, or 410-674-4 in the search box. You may also contact Project Manager Kathy Enot directly by email at k-a-t-h-l-e-e-n dot e-n-o-t at d-o-t dot s-t-a-t-e dot f-l dot u-s by U.S. mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 542, DeLand, Florida 32720, or by phone at 386-943-5149 during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about the projects, go to www.cflroa ds.com. Type the corresponding project number in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the websites now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on the projects. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by Monday, March 6th. Contact information, a recording of the presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting are posted on the project websites. Have a good evening and please remember that safety is everyone's responsibility.